Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Today, we're still talking about floating point numbers. This would be the third video on this topic. And not surprising that we're doing that because, well, the IEEE standard for a floating point number is pretty in depth. Even after this video, we wouldn't have covered everything. Anyway, today I want to speak of yet another edge case that I had originally missed out in my first video. These are, well, for just two specific conditions, one of them being infinity and the second one being NAN or not a number. These are each further subdivided into two categories, so for a total of four conditions. Previously, when we did the normal numbers under the floating point series, we saw that if the exponent was all zeros, it indicated something special. We shouldn't have treated it as, you know, just a number and interpreted it as such. Instead, it has a special meaning. These conditions that we are looking at today also do something similar. But instead of using an exponent of all zeros, they use an exponent of all ones. What this means is we also don't have a so-called maximum exponent of 127. Instead, it's one less because if you see all ones, it means something different. When the exponent is all ones, that in and of itself only indicates that we should probe this further. But more information actually comes to us through the mantissa. So if we take a look at a mantissa and if it's all zeros, this indicates an infinity condition. That's right, if you do some maths and your answer ends up being infinity, you will end up with a string that essentially has an exponent of all ones and a mantissa of all zeros. This can be further subdivided into two cases. The IEEE definition actually makes a distinction between positive and negative infinity. And because of that, we need to look at a sign as well. So the sign could be positive, the sign could be negative, and that gives you your two possible infinities. Now, apart from this, there is still another condition, and that would be NAN, not a number. This generally happens when there is some kind of problem in your calculation, or it's something that violates the rules of math such that, well, there is no answer, there is no numerical answer that, well, fits what you try to do. So we generate an NAN. Again, the way in which we indicate this is very similar because the exponent is once again all ones. This time, however, the mantissa is non-zero. So once you identify these two conditions, you know it's NAN. Now, when it comes to an NAN condition, the sign actually doesn't matter. However, there are still two different types of NAN, and that is where we sort of look into the mantissa to see, well, what values are there. By the way, the interesting thing about an NAN condition is that, well, the mantissa can actually represent any sequence of bits, and these can be used to indicate the nature of the problem. However, today, we're only interested in two versions of NAN a quiet NAN and a signaling NAN. You see, the idea is if you do some calculation and it gives you not a number as an answer, well, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes that's just a consequence of the mathematics. In some other cases, however, that indicates a big problem, right? That is essentially like an exception and that, well, the programmer should know about it. And these are essentially the two cases in which you'll have the two different types of NAN. Now, how the IEEE definition uses the floating point number to indicate this is it uses the most significant bit. So on the Mantisa string, right, you look at the leftmost bit, the most significant bit, right? If it is set, that would be a quiet NAN. It will be one that wouldn't raise an exception. But if it's zero, it indicates a signaling NAN one in which we do have to make some noise to catch the programmer's attention. Of course, do bear in mind that the mantissa has to be non-zero, so in the case of a signaling NAN, you still need to have a 1 somewhere else in the mantissa. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is about it for floating point numbers. Once again, I have updated my simulation so that it takes this into account as well. But yeah, Undoubtedly, at some point of time, another H case is going to come up and I'm going to have to, well, issue another retraction. So, yeah, it's probably time I created a playlist for these videos and maybe even a contents page. Huh, I should do that. 
But anyway, yes, that's it. Um, that's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. I hope you've gained some more insights into floating point numbers. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.